How good does a demo need to be? Next on Music Surgery, with me, Dr. Bob. Hey you guys, quickly before we get started, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. And don't forget to check out the Doctor's Lounge, my store, and the links to some great samples below in the description of this video. A demo of a song is short for demonstration of a song. Its main function is to show off the melody, the chords, and the lyrics to the song. Or is it? Just like everything else in the music business has changed, the demo has evolved as well. Let's take a look at where today's standard is for showing off your song. All right, you guys, let me take you through a bit of history of demos in all genres. Hey, I'm the first person to admit that a song is about the lyric and the melody. That's what a song is. But as time has gone on, everything changes, and so has the definition of a song, especially in a demo. So let me play you kind of, when I started doing this, this is the kind of thing that was accepted as a demo. Two, one, a two, a three, a one. Last kiss, last call, last minute trip to Panama, silly beach. Last trip, take them all, cause you never know when it's gonna end. Second thoughts get in the way, I'm living to the limit every minute of the day. So turn it up and let it play, cause you never know when it's gonna end. Only one way to do it, one way to get through it. Hey! Live it up, live it up, like a joke. So obviously what we have is kind of a guitar, acoustic, uh, vocal um, work tape that was recorded on a phone. Now, when I started out, this was fine. You could turn that in. It has the lyrics. It has the melody. We would turn in a lyric sheet, and hey, there you go. There's the song. Do you like the song? Publishing companies could play that for producers and labels, and that was enough to get the song idea across. If they liked it, they would say, hey, I want to play this for the artist. If the artist would like it, they'd go in and cut it. That's all it took. Well, as time went on, we found out that a lot of producers didn't have much of an imagination, and they would automatically turn something like that down because they needed the demo to give them all of the ideas. They needed to hear the drum part, the bass part, the keyboard part, the acoustic part, then they'd hire musicians that would just basically roughly copy what the demo was because these type of producers weren't really imaginative, they weren't really musical, but they did good business, they did good lunch, and did good politics. So this is a problem that we would find as songwriters that we would run into that just a good demonstration of our song, the melody and the lyric and the chords, wasn't enough. So... As we move on, this was kind of the next phase. Let's just, you know, do this the day of writing the song. Let's do some quick keyboard loop thing, make it sound a little more like a song. So here's the next example in the kind of the chron chronology, is that the word, of demos. It only took me one look to see how forever it only took me one smile to know what I was missing in my life. I knew that after one word, yeah, I needed my heart back. I never thought I'd say this, but I fell in love at first sight. Cause you know what I did when you looked through it. I started dreaming about how it would be one day if I could wrap you up, if I could make you stay. I know I would say I'm lucky to have you. I'm lucky to have you. Baby, I don't want nobody, want nobody else but you, babe. Yeah. I'm lucky to have you. I'm lucky to have you. And I know I'm lucky, but I'm just lucky to have you. Lucky to have you. Lucky to have you. I'm just lucky to have you. Lucky to have you. Lucky to have you. I'm just lucky to have you. I'm just lucky to have you. Throughout my rap. So, there you go. Um... A little more developed, um, more uh, than just a work tape on a phone. It was recorded. You do some tuning on the vocal. 
Um, you have a little groove, the bass part, some keyboards. So that was kind of the next phase of things that kind of was acceptable as a demo. Sometimes that may still be ex acceptable as a demo, but you need to know who you're pitching it to because if you're pitching it to someone who's imaginative, that might be all they want because they don't want too many ideas. They want to put their own ideas into it. But if you're not pitching it to someone that, can realize how a track should sound, hear it in their head, call, uh, pr program it, or call the musicians, you're dead. Because they, um, they've got to hear more than that to be able to copy what you've done in the demo. Now, next, I went through a period, well, I'm still in a period, where I write with artists and write with bands. They would come to town, you would write a song, I would quickly do a drum machine program, they would play guitar on it, they would sing, I would go home, finish the track, and we would pitch, pitch that to a label. So it's a little more important because I've got the, the artist in a room with me and they're a writer on the song, so it's not really a pitch to the artist because the artist is in on the song as well, it's a pitch to the record company. So... The importance of the demo became even more <laughs> the importance of the demo became even more important because you really wanted to get this a label excited. Never assume that anyone's gonna get excited about what could be there. You gotta get them excited about what's on there. So this is a song that I did with a band called Airborne from Australia. They came in, we wrote this song, they sang it. Well, the singer sang it, uh, played the guitars, and I finished it. So as you'll tell by this, it's a little more developed as a demo. I always love that one. So as you can tell now, and this is a big reason why I do the channel, programming and engineering and mixing became as important as lyrics, melody, and chords. And I know song purists out there will disagree with me, and that's fine. But this is the kind of level of demo that it's starting to evolve when, when I did this at, at what labels are accustomed to hear. So if you come in with something that's not this good, it's automatically going to not sound as pro and they're not going to be as interested in hearing the lyrics and the melody. Don't leave anything to their imagination. Try to give them the full picture. That means even in the way that you mix the demo. Like I said, part of the reason I do the channel because <laughs> mixing is as important as writing in the song process now. Like it or not, I'm not saying I like it. I'm just saying it's reality. It's how it is. You've got to get them excited. You've got to get the total picture right up in their face so they're jumping out of the chair going oh my god we've got to do this the next song i wrote with a guy named jen carlos who didn't have a producer and so we wrote the song and i really did the track up big for the same reason so different genre but let me just kind of give you a taste of what this demo was like 
so you can hear how things keep evolving. And as writers, it's important that we become great programmers and great mixers. So they wanted kind of a Bruno Mars type vibe. And every one of these tracks that I'm playing you, I would do a quick demo the day of the write. We would write the session. We, well, we would write the song to a drum machine and a bass or keyboard, just enough to have the chords and whatever. Then we would do all the vocals the day of the write. Sometimes the write would start at 11 and go till 7 at night. I would bring everything home sort through all the vocals, tune all the vocals, beef up the track, and do a good mix. So you might think this is a lot of work for a demo, but when you have the chance to become a producer on it and a mixer on it and a co-writer on it, it's worth it. So, like I said, production skills and mixing skills are part of songwriting skills now. I'll play you another one that was like that. This is a different genre, but a beautiful ballad. It shouldn't be this easy to be happy. I must be Obviously, you can tell by the look of the wave file, it started out slow, soft, grew, and then grew into something huge at the end. Um, another one, I'll just play part of this. This is like a modern day country music demo. I'll just give you a snippet. I sail away, polka dots poking through your sundress. Can't take my eyes off you, girl, that's just what you do. No, I can't get So, as you can tell, um, big tracks, big mix. That's why a lot of people um, have me or people like me program their demo, mix their demo, mix their record because you've really got to get a big impact on everything you do now. Even though, like I know, the song purists are going, it's all about the melody and the lyrics. 
Yes, that is a song, but we're in 2023 now, and there's a lot more that goes into this. Last thing I want to show is this is what a film and TV pitch looks like demo. Now, in film and TV, you pretty much have to give them the record because they're, if they like it, they're going to go, we need to license this uh, tomorrow, and it goes on the air next week. So there's really no time to make any changes. So this one grows quite a bit. I'm going to give you... Uh, so I'll, I'll start it kind of, this is really vibey thing and I was proud of it. Uh, so I'll start at the beginning and you can kind of get a look at, um, you know, what it takes the level of something to go into a film or a TV show. So an important thing here, a lot of film and TV stuff, they may not use your, home, your whole entire song. So you want to have down sections, you want to have up sections, you want to have dynamics. Like that was a verse and a chorus that were down, so they could use that if they needed. Here we kind of go into a verse and chorus and, and an end that climaxes. So they may just take certain chunks. So you want to give them a lot to choose from because they most of the time don't use the whole song. So obviously we have a, that's an up verse. Let's go, there's an up chorus after that. So obviously, a lot of uh, programming, a lot of playing, a lot of detail, a lot of dynamics, uh, a lot of mixing. So a long way from back when this was kind of the accepted method. Get to the bottom of your bucket list fast. Top one off, tip one. Now I'm not saying that can't work for for a producer that you know really well that can hear through that, but in my estimation, don't give anybody any guesswork hammer them over the head 
with as much impact as you possibly can. Well, there you go. Hey, there's no real downside to any of this information. Along with writing a great song, we really need to know how to record and mix them to get people's attention. Another great skill set that's pretty much mandatory these days. Take the time to develop these skills. You'll be happy that you did. Thanks as always for watching. Give me some comment love and a thumbs up below and hit me at drbobmusicsurgery at gmail.com if you want to say hello or you want me to work on your music. Take care of yourselves and each other and I'll see you the next time the doctor's in.